Dead America. Tales from the Front Lines. Left Behind. Chapter 1. Day Zero. One hour before dawn. Two miles west of the naval air base. Private Kirby's voice sliced through the tense darkness. A desperate plea to alert his comrade. On your left. On your left, he yelled, his heart pounding as he reloaded his weapon. Beside him, Private Atkins snapped his rifle to the left and unleashed a series of controlled bursts. The sharp report of gunfire echoed through the small grocery store towards two approaching figures. One crumpled with a headshot. The other took a round to the chest and kept coming. A click signaled an empty magazine. Look out! Atkins shouted, and Kirby's gaze shot up, locking onto the approaching zombie just yards away. Panic surged within him, and he instinctively rushed forward, sidestepping the creature's outstretched arms. In a desperate struggle, Kirby seized the zombie's wrist, twisted it behind the creature's back, and clutched its shirt collar, straining to hold the ghoul in place. Stab it! Stab it! Kirby's voice trembled with urgency. Atkins stepped forward, drawing his knife and driving it into the zombie's skull, ending its grotesque existence. As the creature slumped to the floor, both men stood there, their breaths ragged, their eyes scanning the gruesome tableau. The grocery store's interior was a horrific scene, littered with half a dozen corpses, all dispatched by their hands. As they caught their breath, the sound of approaching footsteps drew their attention. The door! Kirby exclaimed. Both soldiers sprinted toward the front doors, which pushed open in both directions. On one side, the soldiers fought to keep the doors closed, while on the other, a trio of zombies sought to break in. Both sides strained, the doors swinging violently back and forth, teetering over the threshold. Atkins used his foot as a makeshift doorstop, inching the door closer to the center. Get your door to the center, he commanded. Kirby, looking at Atkins for guidance, followed suit, their united efforts slowly but surely pushing the doors together. With a swift motion, Atkins flipped the deadbolt, securing the doors in place. Reluctant to let go of the doors, both men retreated, relieved to see them locked. Outside, the grotesque figures pressed against the glass, their tattered, blood-soaked clothes bearing witness to their gruesome fate bite marks covering their bodies. Basic sure didn't train us for the shit, Kirby remarked. Atkins concurred with a weary nod. No kidding. Both men shared a grim chuckle, attempting to find levity in their dire predicament. A mere ten weeks ago, they had been strangers in basic training, two 19-year-olds thrust into a situation they were ill-prepared for. Their introspection was cut short as the radio crackled to life, startling them. All units, all units, fall back to base. Last ride out of town is in 30, the voice on the radio announced. Fear gripped Atkins and Kirby. Kirby fumbled with his radio in panic, but managed to get it together. Evac requested at the small grocery store at the corner of 5th and Main. Repeat. Evac requested at the small grocery store at the corner of 5th and Main. A brief silence hung in the air before the voice on the radio responded. You have a team soldier. Fall back to base with them. Kirby's voice quivered as he replied. Our team is wiped out. There's only two of us left. Transport is wrecked and we're stranded at our objective. Another moment of silence passed before the voice on the radio returned. Stand by. Kirby and Atkins exchanged worried glances and then turned their gaze to the front door. The three zombies they had prevented from breaking in now had company, another half dozen undead, all pressing against the glass, writhing with grotesque intent. Some of them were former comrades from their unit. That glass is going to hold, right? Atkins asked. Kirby replied with cautious confidence. It should but I'd rather not stick around long enough to find out. The radio crackled to life once more, the voice speaking with an unsettlingly matter-of-fact tone. Soldier, there is no evac available. 
All units in your area have already pulled back to base. You are on your own. Atkins slumped, his head drooping in defeat, while Kirby's anger surged, his voice rising as he shouted into the radio. Are you fucking kidding me? You're just leaving us behind to die? The voice on the radio offered a cold response. I'm sorry, soldier, but we are overwhelmed at the base. The last helicopter leaves in 28 minutes to fly us out to the ships in the Gulf. You can do this. Good luck. With a sense of despair, Kirby continued to call out to the base, but the radio remained silent. Frustrated, he nearly threw it aside, but he restrained himself, tossing it onto one of the checkout registers. How the hell are we supposed to get back to base? We have no transportation, and two miles on foot in that hellscape just isn't happening, Kirby lamented. Atkins glanced out the window, past the thrashing creatures pressed against the glass. Their transport vehicle lay on its roof at the edge of the parking lot, several zombies still feasting on the unfortunate driver, who remained strapped into his seat. The main road was swarming with more undead, aimlessly wandering, their lifeless eyes scanning for prey. Kirby paced anxiously, while Atkins calmly retrieved a candy bar from a nearby rack. Tearing into it, Kirby couldn't comprehend Atkins' apparent calmness. How the hell can you be so calm right now? Kirby demanded. Atkins, munching on the candy bar, offered a simple explanation. Can't think on an empty stomach. Rolling his eyes, Kirby resumed pacing, while Atkins ventured toward the back of the store. Where are you going? Kirby inquired. We gotta see if the back exit is clear, Atkins replied. Even if it is clear, it's not going to be clear back to base, especially with our guys retreating back to it, Kirby pointed out. Atkins paused, considering their options. The roads aren't the only way back to base. Kirby's confusion was palpable as he followed Atkins toward the back of the building. They passed through imposing double doors and found themselves in a storeroom, its shelves filled to the brim with boxes of provisions. Originally, their mission had been to stock up on supplies for the evacuation, but now their priorities had shifted drastically. In this moment, the only thing that mattered was survival. Atkins paused by the back door, his eyes scanning it meticulously, ensuring it wasn't rigged with an alarm. Once satisfied, he drew his handgun, primed for whatever might come their way. A quick exchange of glances with Kirby conveyed their readiness for any potential threat. With caution, Atkins cracked open the heavy door, allowing just enough room to peer out to the left. An alleyway stretched before them, devoid of loading docks. At the far end, a lone figure fixated on an insect dancing near a streetlight. Atkins shifted his gaze to the narrow gap between the door and its frame in the opposite direction. While it wasn't a perfect vantage point, it was a less perilous alternative to exposing himself fully. There, he discerned faint movements at the far end of the alley, details eluding him. Closing the door gently, Atkins moved away from it, approaching a nearby box on the ground. His eyes traveled beyond it to a small table where he found a pen and a piece of cardboard. He sketched out a rough map, drawing a sizable box on the right side with a line curling around the bottom leading to a section marked with crosshatches. Pointing to the makeshift map, he began to explain their dire circumstances. The base is here, Atkins gestured, with one road leading out from it to where we are. There's water on either side of the road, making it a bottleneck. We have to assume that going that way without a vehicle is suicide. Kirby mulled over the proposition. So you want to swim for it? Atkins shook his head, his expression grim. It would be a couple mile swim at a minimum. We'd probably succumb to hypothermia before we reached base. Kirby's response held a bitter edge. Sounds better than getting ripped to shreds by those things. Atkins offered a thin smile. At least we have a backup plan. Both men shared a humorless chuckle before resuming their discussion. So what is the plan? Kirby asked. Atkins pointed out a fact that might offer them a lifeline. There are lots of private docks along the waterfront. 
We just need to get to one and borrow a boat. Straight shot across the water to the base. 25 minutes until the last ride out, Kirby noted. Water can't be more than six or seven blocks away. We can do this, Atkins said. How the hell do you know all of this? We've only been on base a few weeks, Kirby inquired. Grew up in Houston. Parents used to take us down here on vacation, Atkins replied. Thank God for little miracles, Kirby said. How are you doing on ammo? Both men checked their gear. Kirby reported two and a half mags for the rifle. Full mag for sidearm. I got two mags and two bullets for my rifle. Full on the sidearm, Atkins added. Loadout seemed a lot more reasonable when there were eight of us, Kirby said with a hint of despair. No kidding, Atkins agreed. So how do we do this? Kirby asked. No clue, Kirby. I just know that the bay is to the northeast of us. Just have to get there and hope we can find a boat, Atkins admitted. You lead the way since you know where we're going, Kirby said. Well, a direction at any rate, Atkins replied. Both men stood ready, their weapons in hand, practicing strict trigger discipline. They understood that discharging their firearms would be like sending up a flare, announcing their presence to every creature in the vicinity. They paused by the back door, Atkins positioned beside it, giving Kirby a nod, signaling his intention to venture out. However, as soon as the door's lock clicked past, it flung open unexpectedly. A zombie surged in, seizing Atkins and driving him backward into the storeroom. The two of them crashed onto a nearby box, the creature moaning, its jaws snapping, attempting to take a bite out of Atkins. A fierce struggle ensued, with Atkins digging his elbows into the box, just inches away from the menacing creature. As Atkins began to lose ground, his elbows sinking into the thick cardboard, he suddenly felt relief when the zombie abruptly ceased its assault. He looked past the creature's head and saw that Kirby had saved him, holding the creature up by the knife he had thrust into its skull. Together, they gently lowered the lifeless body to the ground before turning their attention back to the door. Both soldiers stood there, rifles aimed at the opening, their ears attuned to any sound. Much to their relief, their earlier commotion hadn't attracted the attention of any other nearby threats. Both men let out a collective sigh of relief as they approached the door. Atkins paused, checking the alleyway and found it clear in both directions. He turned to Kirby and spoke in hushed tones. Let's try this again. Kirby nodded in agreement, and the two men ventured outside, braving the zombie-infested darkness. Chapter 2 Atkins led the duo down the narrow alleyway, shrouded in darkness. The only source of illumination was the faint moonlight that pierced through the thick canopy above. As they cautiously advanced, Atkins suddenly halted his keen instincts detecting movement up ahead. They stood in silence, tension thick in the air, fear coursing through their veins. Before them, a pack of eight creatures roamed along the street, just beyond the alley's end. Though they possessed the firepower to eliminate the threat, it was what lay beyond those buildings that filled them with dread. The morning's battle had already been arduous, claiming the lives of six of their squad members. Questions about how so many of these things had seemingly materialized out of nowhere lingered in their minds, but they forced those thoughts aside. The reason no longer mattered. What mattered was that they were here, and their numbers were overwhelming. As the immediate threat passed, Atkins signaled for them to continue. They moved cautiously toward the end of the row, with Atkins positioning them against the left wall, his weapon trained on the group that had just passed by. A sense of relief washed over Atkins as he observed the creatures sprinting down the street, presumably drawn by some other commotion, perhaps another survivor stumbling upon the horrors lurking nearby. Regardless of the reason, the immediate danger had abated. Come on, Private Atkins urged. The two of them hurriedly exited the alley, racing down the sidewalk of a small downtown area. On both sides of the road, the storefronts remained locked and abandoned, never to open their doors again. 
Some shops displayed shattered windows, evidence of previous looting by other soldiers. Continuing for another block, they remained on edge, the sounds of movement and distant moaning coming from surrounding streets keeping them vigilant. They reached the next intersection and peered to the left, spotting a dozen creatures half a block away, feeding on a hapless victim sprawled on the ground. Atkins gestured for Kirby to follow, and they crossed the street with stealth, Atkins taking aim at the approaching mob while Kirby scanned the area ahead. Their progress was interrupted when a creature stumbled out of a store, tripping over the jagged remnants of a shattered storefront window and crashing to the ground. In one swift motion, Atkins swung his rifle over his shoulder and drew his knife, driving it deep into the back of the zombie's skull, ending its existence in a single decisive blow. Oh, shit! Private Kirby exclaimed. Before Atkins could react, Kirby opened fire, sending several three-round bursts into the store from which the creature had emerged. Turning to look, Atkins saw a dozen more zombies rushing toward the shattered window, knocking over empty shelves and displays in their pursuit. Bullets found their marks, dropping a few of the creatures, but the majority continued their relentless advance. Atkins scrambled to his feet as Kirby unleashed more bursts, and they sprinted down the street. As they reached the next block, zombies began emerging behind them, quickly locking onto their presence and giving chase. Ignoring the pursuing undead, they focused on sprinting as fast as they could up the street. Reaching the next intersection, Kirby watched with anxiety as Atkins, a few steps ahead, narrowly avoided being tackled by a ghoul. Atkins pressed onto the next block, and Kirby gave a final shove to the fallen zombie buying them a precious few seconds. They managed to reach a couple more stores before trouble descended upon them. A dozen zombies rounded the corner of the next block, charging directly toward them. What do we do? A panicked Kirby said. Maintaining his composure, Atkins quickly assessed the situation. He looked to his right, across the street, spotting a hardware store with a shattered front window. Hardware store? Atkins exclaimed. The duo dashed across the street, reaching the broken window and leaping inside. Atkins raised his weapon, immediately spotting a target as he entered the store. A zombie in the main aisle let out an excited moan as it sprinted toward him. Atkins took careful aim and fired, the single round finding its mark in the creature's head. Meanwhile, Kirby was right behind him, sending a couple of bursts toward the approaching horde. Bullets found their targets, causing a few of the undead to stumble. Frantically scanning the surroundings, Kirby sought something to block the broken window, but Atkins had a different plan. Get to the back room, Atkins ordered. What about them? Kirby questioned, his voice filled with urgency. Just keep moving, Atkins replied with authority. Though they held the same rank, Kirby didn't question the order. He simply followed Atkins. The duo rushed through the store, Atkins remaining vigilant for any signs of resistance. Relief washed over him as he spotted the entrance to the storeroom, and they rushed through, finding themselves in a spacious area with a loading dock. Unfortunately, there was no interior door to seal them off. Now what? Private Kirby inquired, his voice laden with uncertainty. Atkins wasted no time, rushing toward the back door of the building as Kirby hurriedly swapped in a fresh magazine. With every second crucial, Atkins raised his weapon to head height and flung the door open to the dimly lit alley. As the door creaked open, he spotted a trio of zombies just inches away. Their delayed response to the door's movement granted Atkins a brief opportunity to act. He unleashed a torrent of bullets into them, his trigger finger moving rapidly, adopting a spray-and-pray approach. His barrage brought down the immediate threats, clearing their path. However, as soon as he stepped into the alley, the ominous sound of moans and approaching footsteps filled the air. Turning toward the street, Atkins spotted a couple more creatures rapidly closing in on their position, roughly 20 yards away. He took careful aim, delivering precise headshots as Kirby emerged from the building and slammed the door shut behind him. 
Kirby quickly scanned the surroundings and found a piece of metal rebar on the ground. He wedged it through the door handle and into a drainage pipe on the building side. The door shook as the pursuing creatures relentlessly slammed against it from the inside, desperately trying to break through. Without a moment to spare, Atkins led them down the alley. They nearly reached the road when a pair of zombies wandered in front of the alley's opening, oblivious to their presence. Atkins hugged the edge of the wall, dropping to a crouch, with Kirby following suit. They remained concealed in the shadows for a brief moment, as the creatures perked up, drawn by a distant sound that prompted them to move down the street. The two soldiers picked up the pace, advancing to the next block, opting for the alley despite its bottleneck nature. It provided some concealment in the form of shadows, and was less traveled. They continued their cautious journey, but halted abruptly when they spotted a sizable horde at the next street, staying hidden in the shadows. They dared not alert the creatures, fully aware they would be quickly overwhelmed. Kirby lightly tapped Atkins on the arm, seeking his attention. Atkins turned, and Kirby silently mouthed the words, What now? Atkins contemplated for a moment, moving to the next door and giving it a gentle tug. He breathed a sigh of relief when it opened. Glancing back at Kirby, he shrugged, signaling that they should proceed. The two of them slipped inside, finding themselves in a small back room. They closed the door behind them without latching it, fully aware that the slightest noise could attract the relentless undead. They navigated the back room cautiously, weapons at the ready, hoping to find themselves alone in the building. Luck, however, was not on their side. As they approached the exit of the back room, which was just a curtain, both men took positions on either side, gently pulling back the fabric to peer into the store beyond. It was a spacious clothing store with its front door wide open. Several dozen creatures roamed through the aisles, their frustrated moans growing louder each time they knocked something off a shelf, only to find it devoid of sustenance. As the two soldiers slowly retreated from the curtain, a metal hook clattered, capturing the attention of one of the nearby zombies. It instinctively emitted a moan and charged toward them. Atkins swiftly drew his knife, keeping a watchful eye on the approaching ghoul through the small gap in the curtain. When it breached the threshold, he thrust his blade forward with all his might, targeting the creature's nasal bridge. The blade struck true, and fortune favored them as the zombie collapsed lifelessly. Kirby grabbed the fallen undead by the waist, while Atkins struggled to keep it upright. Despite their efforts to minimize noise, the creature landed with a thud. Almost instantly, excited moans emanated from the adjacent room accompanied by the sound of approaching footsteps. Back door, Private Atkins urgently ordered. With their cover blown, both men sprinted toward the back door, burst through it, and slammed it shut behind them. It was instinctual, but they swiftly realized their mistake as the metallic sound echoed through the early morning air. A split second later, moans echoed from the opposite end of the alley, signaling that a horde was converging on their position. Kirby raised his rifle and fired a few bursts in their direction, hoping to slow their advance. Atkins glanced back the way they had come, seeing more ghouls closing in from that direction as well. He kept his back pressed against the door, striving to hold it shut under the weight of the zombies within. What do we do? A panicked Kirby yelled, sensing the direness of their situation. Attempting to remain calm, Atkins searched for a solution. He looked up at the rooftop of the building across from them and spotted a large drainage pipe. The pipe! Atkins exclaimed. Confused, but with no time to debate, Kirby joined his partner and ran toward the drain pipe. They moved swiftly, the zombies inching closer with each passing second. Kirby could feel their fingertips grazing his boots as he climbed, forcing him to ascend even faster nearly knocking Atkins off balance. Watch it, admonished Atkins. Just keep moving, Kirby replied urgently. It was a tense climb, but they eventually reached the rooftop. Atkins reached back, grabbing Kirby by the arms and hauling him over the edge. 
both soldiers collapsed on the rooftop, breathing heavily. Well, that went well, Kirby remarked with a wry smile. We're still alive, aren't we? Atkins retorted. Barely, Kirby admitted, examining his boots and spotting bloody fingerprints on the heels. He pointed it out to Atkins, who could only shake his head. Damn, that was a close call, Atkins acknowledged. You're telling me, Kirby replied. They got up and walked to the front of the building, gazing down at the road below, where dozens of zombies continued to roam. So, what do we do now? Kirby inquired. Atkins walked to the other side of the building, peering into the distance. A few blocks away, they could see the water, with their base a distant dot on the horizon. We get to the water, Atkins declared. As they stared out at the base, they watched as a few dots moved up from it and began to fly away. Is that? Kirby started to ask. The last chopper's out of town, Atkins confirmed, checking his watch and realizing that their 30-minute deadline was nearly up. The two men gazed at the horizon, their hearts heavy, with the knowledge that their already dire situation had somehow worsened. Chapter 3 Both men stood on the rooftop of the row of downtown businesses, their eyes fixed on their military base. Now an unreachable dot on the horizon. As they continued to stare, the sun began to emerge from behind the base, casting a breathtaking illumination over the water. That's pretty at least. Private Atkins remarked, attempting to find solace in the beauty of the sunrise. Kirby, however, couldn't contain his frustration and fear. He turned to his partner with an exasperated expression, raising his voice in distress. At least it's pretty. Are you fucking kidding me right now? We just watched our only hope of survival fly off into the sunset without us. Atkins remained surprisingly calm in the face of Kirby's outburst. Sunrise, he corrected. What? Kirby responded, still overwhelmed by their predicament. Sunrise, Atkins reiterated. They flew off into the sunrise, not the sunset, like you said. It's just a turn of phrase, Kirby retorted, exasperated, and it really doesn't matter what you call it, because they left without us, and we're fucked. Kirby began pacing back and forth, muttering to himself in despair. That's it. I'm going to die in Corpus Christi, Texas. Corpus Christi, how is this my resting place? Atkins maintained his composure, allowing Kirby to vent his frustrations. After a couple more minutes of rambling and defeatism, Atkins finally spoke up. Have you gotten that out of your system yet? Kirby stopped pacing and ranting, taking several deep breaths to steady himself. He paused for a moment, as if about to start another tirade, but restrained himself. Okay, I'm good. But goddamn man, how are you so calm? We just got left to die, and you're enjoying the sunrise like a snowbird on vacation. I'm calm because I need to be calm, Atkins replied. Panicking doesn't help our situation. Kirby wasn't satisfied with the answer and pressed further. You didn't answer my question. What about our current situation screams out for calm? We're trapped on a rooftop surrounded by whatever those things are, and we don't have a way to get to the fleet. You got two out of three right. That's not too bad. Atkins replied cryptically. Two out of three. What are you talking about? Kirby inquired, puzzled. Kirby pondered for a moment before it clicked. We have a way to get to the fleet. Atkins grinned confidently, prompting an intrigued smile from Kirby. How? Do you know how to fly a helicopter or something? Nope, but I know how to drive a boat. What good is that going to do? The base is evacuated, and assuming we can find a boat, we're still in the bay. Yep, and a few miles to the north is a shipping lane that leads out to the gulf. If we can get to that, we should be able to catch up with the fleet before they sail off to wherever they're going. But everybody is already on board. Why wouldn't they leave? Kirby questioned. With as quickly as everything fell apart, I'd be shocked if they even had a destination. 
Atkins explained, which works for us because it gives us time to get there. Kirby considered this for a moment before nodding in agreement. Good enough for me. So what's next? We find a way down and haul ass to the waterfront. It looks like there's a wealthy neighborhood just over there. Bound to be some boats. Kirby approached the rooftop's edge, peering down at the alleyway below, where dozens of ghouls had congregated around the drainage pipe they had ascended. Step one looks like a troublemaker, Kirby remarked. These things seem to like noise, so I'm going to give them some, Atkins said. Diversion, Kirby questioned. It's as good a plan as any, unless you've got something better. You've gotten us this far, Kirby conceded. Atkins nodded and moved to the far corner of the row of buildings, away from their intended neighborhood. He fired several shots down toward a dumpster, the bullets clanging loudly against it and creating a commotion that drew the attention of the zombies. Within seconds, hordes of ghouls from all directions sprinted toward the dumpster. Several of them collided with it, intensifying the cacophony and drawing even more undead to the scene. Atkins quietly backed away from the edge while walking back to Kirby, who was keeping watch on the alley below. How are we looking? Atkins inquired in hushed tones. One straggler that's caught up on something, but nothing we can't handle quietly, Kirby reported. Atkins looked over the edge, spotting the trapped ghoul at the base of the pipe, struggling to free its arm, but failing miserably. These things aren't that bright, are they? Kirby remarked. Doesn't appear so, Atkins agreed. Atkins drew his knife, holding it ready, and descended from the rooftop, keeping a close eye on the ghoul, which remained focused on the dumpster's direction. The distant banging sounds provided the perfect cover for his approach. He halted a couple of feet above the ghoul, which still hadn't noticed his presence. With knife in hand, Atkins pushed off from the wall and landed on top of the creature, driving the blade into the top of its skull. They both hit the ground with a thud, and Atkins quickly pulled out his rifle, ready to cover the mob down the alley. Despite the emerging sunlight, it was still dim enough to provide some cover in the shadows, allowing Atkins to maintain a firing line. Satisfied that the mob wasn't coming after them, he signaled for Kirby to follow. A few moments later, Kirby joined him on the ground, rifle at the ready. They stood still for a moment, ensuring that they wouldn't be pursued as soon as they turned around. When they were confident that the mob was occupied, they turned and began moving. Atkins took the lead, glancing both ways and confirming that the noise from his earlier gunshots had drawn the local zombies in his direction. Instead of continuing up the alley, they opted to navigate through a nearby neighborhood. The houses were elegant, two-story brick structures far beyond the price range of both men. They utilized the grass to muffle their footsteps, but there were still plenty of eyes around. Their tension heightened when they heard commotion to their left, emanating from one of the houses. They turned and witnessed a zombie relentlessly slamming against a chain-link fence, causing it to shake violently. Atkins led them across the yard, using the house as a shield to break line of sight with the agitated ghoul, hoping it would quiet down once they were out of view. Unfortunately, the damage had been done. A small group of zombies sprinted around the corner of the next house, searching for the source of the noise. They spotted the two soldiers and began running in their direction. Kirby raised his weapon to fire, but Atkins quickly lowered his rifle, motioning for him to follow. Backyard, come on, Atkins instructed. The two men swiftly made their way toward the fence on the other side of the house, away from the approaching trio of zombies. With ample time to spare, they hopped over the fence just as the undead reached it, causing a commotion. The noise alerted the first zombie to their presence, prompting Atkins to prepare for a close-quarters combat situation. Kirby drew his knife, watching intently as Atkins assumed a low-attack position. As the creature closed in, Atkins darted forward, skillfully wrapping his arms around the ghoul's waist, executing a wrestling-like maneuver. He spun the zombie around and slammed it face first into the ground, displaying a level of dominance over his opponent reminiscent of a seasoned wrestler. Without hesitation, 
Kirby rushed over and drove his knife into the back of the zombie's skull, swiftly ending its existence. He yanked the blade free as Atkins sat on the ground for a moment, looking back toward the trio of zombies still struggling to get through the fence. Among the group, there were a middle-aged man and woman, along with a teenager. Both adults bore bite marks, and the teenager had blood around its mouth. Atkins let out a sigh of resignation. Are you okay, Atkins? Kirby inquired. Yeah, that just depresses me, though, Atkins replied, gesturing to the approaching family of zombies. At least they're still together, Kirby added with a touch of dry humor, causing Atkins to shake his head. Come on, Mr. Brightside of life. Let's keep moving. The two of them continued through the neighborhood, relieved to find it mostly empty. If there were any survivors, they seemed to be keeping to themselves. As they reached the final block, they spotted a few creatures in the backyard of a two-story house without a fence. The back door was slightly ajar, and beyond it, they could see the privacy wall surrounding the affluent waterfront neighborhood. Taking a knee beside one of the neighboring houses, they discussed their next steps. That wall around the neighborhood is no joke, Kirby observed. Upon closer inspection, they noted that it was an eight-foot-tall flat concrete wall with a flat top, not easily scaled without assistance. Let's get into the house so we can scout it, Atkins suggested. Kirby considered their options. Kill or blow by? They observed the creatures approximately 10 yards away from the back door, which was solid with only a small window. We'll pull them our way, then blow by them. That door looks solid enough, Atkins decided. Kirby nodded, and the two men emerged from their hiding spot, casually strolling across the grass and stopping at the property line. Atkins began making a clicking noise with his mouth to attract the attention of the zombies. It took a moment, but one of them finally noticed and emitted a moan before sprinting toward them. The other two followed closely behind. As the leader closed in to within a few yards, the two soldiers sprang into action. They split, rushing past the leader while Atkins gave it a shove, causing it to lose balance. They dashed straight toward the other two zombies, skillfully evading them and leaving the undead behind as they made a beeline for the open back door. They slipped inside and slammed it shut behind them. Atkins secured the door and Kirby quickly swept the first floor with both men meeting at the foot of the stairs. They ascended the stairs rapidly, securing the second floor and exchanging clear calls. They converged in the front bedroom, moving to the window to look out. Both men let out sighs of defeat. Well, it was a good idea at least, Kirby acknowledged. Chapter 4 The two soldiers stood side by side, their eyes fixed on the second floor bedroom window, gazing out towards the affluent neighborhood they had been attempting to infiltrate. The imposing eight-foot concrete wall loomed before them, a formidable obstacle made even more daunting by the hordes of creatures massing against it. The once pristine neighborhood had descended into chaos. From their elevated vantage point, they could catch a glimpse of the water, a mere three blocks away on the other side of the wall. However, reaching it appeared to be a formidable challenge. The streets and yards below were overrun with dozens of ravenous zombies. Private Kirby broke the silence, his voice tinged with disbelief. How the hell does it all fall apart so quickly? These people should still be asleep, not going on a rampage. Private Atkins, his expression grim, offered an explanation. One house gets a call about things going bad in Austin, so they head for the docks. Others follow suit. Next thing you know, it's a running buffet, and the entire neighborhood is infested. Kirby pondered their next move. Well, if they were going to the docks, let's hope they left us a boat. Atkins shook his head, his tone somber. That many zombies roaming around. It's pretty safe to assume some boat owner didn't make it. Kirby's brow furrowed. The question is, how are we getting there? There's a hundred of those things between us and the wall pretty sure they aren't going to let us set up a ladder. Atkins' mind was already racing with a plan. Downstairs, I might have an idea. 
As they descended the stairs, the distant sound of zombies banging on the back door kept them on edge. Atkins moved to the garage door and, with a cautious pull, opened it to reveal a sedan parked inside. A triumphant grin spread across Atkins' face. Bingo. See if you can find keys. The next few minutes were spent scouring the kitchen and living room. Their search fruitless as they found no keys. Kirby sighed in frustration. I got nothing. Atkins shared his disappointment. Me either. They must have loaded up the other car and taken off. So what now? Kirby asked. Atkins took a moment to study the photos on the wall. One depicted the family at a young kid's baseball game, and an idea began to take shape in his mind. He turned to Kirby. How good is your throwing arm? Kirby, puzzled, replied, played high school ball, had a scholarship offer to play at a small school in upstate New York, but signed up for this shit show instead. Atkins pointed to the bedroom down the hall. Check that bedroom. Looks like the younger kid was a baseball star. Kirby remained perplexed. What good is that going to do us? Atkins grinned mischievously. You'll see. Get the baseballs. Kirby nodded and retrieved three baseballs from the room. Atkins made some adjustments to the garage door mechanism, ensuring it could be opened manually without making much noise. With baseballs in hand, Kirby questioned again. What's the plan? Atkins instructed him, go out the front door quietly and throw them up the street. Make sure they hit the pavement. Kirby, still unsure but willing to trust his comrade, ventured outside, peeking to ensure the coast was clear. Dozens of zombies were present, but their attention was fixated on the wall, attempting to breach it due to the commotion on the other side. Kirby hurled one of the baseballs as far as he could down the street, creating a loud impact on the pavement. Several zombies broke away from the wall and dashed towards the sound, leaving fewer zombies in their immediate vicinity. He rushed back into the garage, where Atkins was waiting. Kirby reported they're running down the street. All of them, Atkins questioned. Kirby replied, about two-thirds. It landed hard, so if that didn't pull them away, the other two won't. Good enough. Now, I want you to open the garage door as quietly as you can. As soon as it's up, start helping me push, Atkins replied. Kirby, still puzzled, asked, Then what? Atkins smirked. Get up on the trunk and keep them occupied so I can keep pushing. We don't need a lot of momentum. Just enough to get us to the wall. Always had car surfing on my bucket list. Kirby replied with a sly smile on his face. As the garage door began to open, the noise sent a shiver down their spines, but they were relieved when the remaining zombies did not react. With the garage door sufficiently raised to allow the car's exit, Kirby and Atkins began to push the sedan out onto the driveway. Their efforts picked up momentum when a lone zombie noticed them and began to approach. Kirby noticed the approaching threat and gave the car one final shove before jumping onto the trunk, ready to retreat if necessary. He taunted the zombies, diverting their attention from Atkins, who was still pushing with all his strength. The car made its way onto the street, and Atkins saw several creatures closing in on him, forcing him to climb onto the car's hood. Come on, baby, get us there. Atkins muttered as the car continued to roll across the street picking up speed as it descended a slight incline. Kirby shouted from the trunk, Hang on! Kirby and Atkins found themselves picking up speed as the car went down the slight embankment. With a bone-jarring impact, the vehicle slammed into a wall, sending Atkins sprawling forward onto the hood while Kirby staggered, bracing himself against the concrete. In the midst of this chaos, a couple of zombies lurched toward Kirby, one of them clutching his ankle. With quick reflexes, he shook off the undead assailant before joining Atkins on the hood of the car, where more zombies closed in. Now what? Kirby's voice trembled with fear as he faced the approaching horde. Atkins, his nerves steely, replied, running start and jump. Kirby's skepticism was evident. Seriously? What? 
You did it in basic, Atkins retorted. Not very well, and not with those things trying to eat me, Kirby replied, his voice strained. You got this. Now go. And don't forget about the things on the other side, Atkins urged, a hint of urgency in his tone. Kirby sighed, but steadied himself. With determination, he pushed off the car's hood, dropped onto the trunk, and propelled himself up the wall, his fingers clutching the edge as he pulled himself over. As Atkins prepared to make the same leap, a burst of gunfire erupted from the other side of the wall. Kirby, he called out. Without hesitation, Atkins rushed toward the wall, leaped, and hoisted himself over. As he landed, he drew his rifle, scanning his surroundings frantically. But Kirby was nowhere to be seen. Kirby, where are you? Atkins called out, his concern evident. Another gunshot rang out, decapitating a zombie that had been creeping toward Atkins from behind a tree. He turned his gaze toward the source, where Kirby stood beside another tree, aiming his rifle and signaling for Atkins to join him. Atkins readied his rifle, sprinting toward Kirby, who appeared shaken. Are you okay, Kirby? Kirby nodded, his eyes filled with terror, but eventually he managed to calm down, landed right on top of a couple of those things, managed to fight them off and take them down. Did you get bit? Atkins inquired, his worry palpable. Kirby continued to speak hurriedly, prompting Atkins to shake him gently and raise his voice. Are you bitten? Kirby shook his head vigorously, holding up his arm. A large rip was visible in his sleeve. But his undershirt was unscathed. Another inch, and I'd be dead. A sigh of relief escaped Atkins as he patted Kirby on the shoulder. Come on, buddy. Let's find us a boat. Kirby nodded, and the two men started moving, with Atkins leading the way. Their rifles at the ready, they made their way through the front yard of a house. As they turned a corner, they spotted a couple of creatures rushing toward them. Simultaneously, they fired, each taking down their respective targets. Just beyond, a small horde advanced toward them from a couple of houses down. Forget them! Just move! Atkins shouted, and the two soldiers sprinted through the neighborhood, occasionally firing off shots to fend off approaching threats. They reached an intersection with a sign pointing to the left, reading docks. Without hesitation, they made the turn, racing toward the water in sight. Glancing over their shoulders, they saw the pursuing group had grown to 20 but remained 40 yards behind them. The path ahead seemed relatively clear, with only a few creatures emerging from the docks. They continued to fire as they ran, barely pausing to aim, quickly dispatching their pursuers. Arriving at the docks, they halted at the wooden edge, gazing out in dismay. There wasn't a single boat tied up. Fuck, Atkins muttered, dropping his head, feeling defeated. In his despair, Kirby smacked him on the shoulder, pointing to the far end of the docks. Look. Atkins followed Kirby's gaze and spotted a boat floating about 50 yards off the furthest dock. Without a word, he took off running with Kirby, with the zombies closing in. They reached the last dock row, barely ahead of the pursuing ghouls, and planted their feet. With a desperate leap, they soared out into the water, splashing down hard. A few seconds later, they heard splashes behind them as the zombies chasing them ran right off the dock's edge, sinking beneath the dark waters. Both soldiers kicked and swam vigorously, desperate to put distance between themselves and the sinking zombies. Once they were clear of the docks, they treaded water for a moment, looking back at the flailing undead as they disappeared below the surface. To their surprise, the water was surprisingly warm. Hey, Atkins, Kirby called out. Yes, Kirby, Atkins responded. I thought you said we'd freeze to death in this water, Kirby remarked, a hint of humor in his voice. Well, clearly I lied, Atkins replied with a chuckle. I'm aware, but why would you do that? Kirby asked. To put your mind at ease, Atkins explained. Kirby was puzzled. How is not freezing to death putting my mind at ease? Because freezing to death is scary and out of our control. If I told you the water was warm, 
then you might have wanted to swim the bay, Atkins said. And that would have been a bad thing, Kirby inquired. Yep, we would have drowned. If I'm going to die, I'd rather not exhaust myself beforehand, Atkins replied with a sense of grim pragmatism. Kirby laughed and shook his head. Well, it's a good thing we didn't die then, because I'm exhausted. Let's get to that boat and hope it has a minibar, Atkins suggested. Hell yeah, brother, Kirby agreed. The two soldiers swam over to the boat, a smaller luxury vessel. They found the ladder at the back and pulled themselves up. As soon as Atkins stepped onto the deck, a loud moan echoed from the covered area inside the boat. A lone creature, its body covered in bite marks, rushed toward him. With no time to aim his weapon, Atkins lowered his shoulder, using the creature's momentum to toss it overboard. It landed with a hard splash in the water, quickly disappearing beneath the surface. Drawing his handgun, Atkins swept the rest of the boat as Kirby pulled himself aboard. After ensuring their safety, Atkins came out, nodding his head. We're clear. I know this shit has just started, but I've already had my fill of these things, Kirby admitted. Well, the military did abandon us. We have a fully stocked yacht. We could sail off to an island in the Gulf and try our luck there, Atkins proposed. Kirby took a moment to contemplate but didn't respond immediately. Let me think on it while we get to the Gulf. Atkins chuckled, nodding as he headed for the controls. After a brief moment, the boat roared to life without much trouble. He shifted it into gear, and the two soldiers set off toward an uncertain future, leaving behind the sinking horde of zombies in their wake. The End <laughs>